take a look at books. Um, Google's making a real push for all their play services now since we have books, music, movies, TV shows, um, magazines. So a lot of things to look at. So go into the Playbooks um, application and then you can see there's a couple of uh, O'Reilly technical texts I've been uh, reading out. Let's just pull out a, one of the samples here on Java generics if you know what those are. I'm going to go into the font controls here and change the controls because I was using it late at night. So you have full separate brightness controls right here inside the books application. Uh, it totally disregards what you're using on the uh, main device. So you can set it to exactly the way you want it. In any case, you can see we've got nice animations. Uh, you have the ability to tap on the screen or drag pages over. Jump back to home. And instead, let's uh, pull up Currents. And let's see, we've got the Daily Beast. And this is Google's uh, attempt at kind of a flipboard type functionality, I suppose. Also, have access to magazines issue of popular science here. Tap on the screen to get other controls. I'll go into uh, text mode. Makes it easier to read. Recommended books, uh, recommended apps. You saw it's the uh, widget that we moved up here. Go into the Play Store. And you can see we have the sections for apps, music, magazines, movies and TVs, and uh, books. Jump into Gmail, so you can see how it works. Um, Multi-paned interface, works in landscape mode as well, of course. Of course, you still have that same problem. Uh, jump into notifications quickly, and I'm going to pull up uh, that AIM message so you can see the other email client also go into landscape mode and see that it too supports the uh, multi-pane view. I've turned off uh, the Wi-Fi connection on the device to show you that Google now has offline speech-to-text capabilities. This is a test of the speech-to-text capabilities, period. I sure hope it works, period. And you see it worked quite well, even when we're offline, which is something that earlier versions of Android could not handle. If you like speech-to-text, chances are you'll also like text-to-speech, and you can use the uh, Google Search Now tool to get all sorts of good functionality. You can either tap on the search bar here, and it'll expect you to type something. Tap on the microphone, it'll immediately go into speech recognition mode. You can also get to it by dragging up from home. And lastly, you can get to it from the lock screen directly by dragging up. Once inside, though, all you have to do is say this special magic word, which is, of course, Google. Who is the president of Germany? And whenever you ask it a query that it knows a particular specific answer for, you'll get a nice card view of the answer like this. Otherwise, Show me pictures of dogs. You might get graphics like this or generic search results. What's the fastest car in the world? There's a lot of good functionality in this system right now, but it's still missing a lot of things. So you can do simple things like Set an alarm for tomorrow at 6 a.m. Did the Phillies win their last baseball game? Who do the Phillies play next?
Is it going to rain tomorrow in Washington, D.C.? What's the cast of Burn Notice? How tall is the Eiffel Tower? Eiffel Tower is 1,063 feet tall. What is Memorial Day? Memorial Day is day the last Sunday in May on which those who died in active military service. 18% of 95.33. U.S. Air Flight 651. U.S. 661 from San Francisco to Philadelphia is on time and departs in one hour 50 minutes. SP 500. So you can see there's a lot of things that the system can actually give you cards for. Otherwise, you just get regular search results. Next up, how about the Google Chrome browser. Chrome is now the default browser in Android uh, as of version 4.1 Jelly Bean, of course. Cool functionality, and it's working really well. Uh, I've been using the beta for a long time. Right now you can see I'm looking at what tabs are open on other devices. This is my desktop. You can see I've got a story up about Adobe, and I can easily get to it. And um, you know, when I go back to my desktop, I'll actually be able to see the tabs I have open on this device as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, of course, there's also access to uh, bookmarks, and they're shared between desktop and other devices as well, and most visited. So you can see, obviously, I'm reading up a lot on um, Ziploc bags, it seems. Let's go to bookmarks and uh, my desktop bookmarks, and just go to the mobile burn site, just so you can see how it loads. There's no flash support, uh, as I just hinted at. Adobe mentioned there will be no flash support for Chrome. So it's not a surprise. They've said that for a while now. Everything works nice and smoothly. Uh, scrolls much more smoothly than I had seen on some other tablets when I was running the beta. I'm quite pleased with the performance. And of course, the tabs are always very nice. If you're interested in music, of course, the uh, Google Play music client is preloaded. Uh, let's have a play a song here just so you can see how it works. Same basic organization um, in all the more modern applications. You've got the action bar across the top. allows you to go back different levels inside the application without using the back button and sometimes getting tossed back to the home screen, which was always kind of confusing. So you can see that the views change somewhat as you switch into landscape mode. And of course, community controls everywhere. Jump back to the home screen, and obviously, you have controls up here at the top as well. So, what's missing the device? Uh, actually, not a heck of a lot. Um, about the only thing in terms of software I can say that's really truly missing is that there's no app, uh, application for using the camera. Uh, now, I understand that there's no rear facing camera, and, and quite honestly, I don't want to encourage people walking around holding a tablet in front of their faces taking photos. But since you already have the forward facing camera, it would be nice to allow people to uh, snap quick uh, self portraits, whatever. As it stands, though, you can only use the forward facing camera in um, you know, Google Talk Chat or Skype or uh, you know, Hangouts on Google Plus or something like that. There's no ability to snap photos. Otherwise, uh, not really missing too much. It's a, pretty much a slam dunk. It's the best Android tablet I've uh, worked with by far. Uh, really low price point, uh, really high performance level, and uh, I'm actually quite a fan of the smaller tablet sizes, you know, the 7 and 8 inch tablets. So really something that uh, I can support. And I own a um, Kindle Fire, as you saw earlier, and you know, this is by far much more um, my speed. Maybe a little more complicated than the Kindle Fire, but uh, definitely much, much, much more powerful for the same price. So there you go. That is the Google Nexus 7 by Asus. For MobileBurn.com, I'm Michael Oral. Thanks for watching.